recording. And, and then it records? And of all things, it's recording. Right here, aboard the uh, Young and the Restless. Um, documenting the aftermath. The aftermath. The aftermath. You know, the, the July 4th, 2010. And Very successful. Right. No casualties. No casualties. Yeah, it's always good then. And that's really good. And there's coffee made with hose water right there. Look at that. Nothing like hose water coffee. You know, like I said, uh, some people order it that way. You know, and we're yeah. thinking about, uh, you know, I, I mean, I can see the packages. I, you know, it's going to be the anti-Starbucks. Mcdonald's is trying to do this. <laughs> but what they need to do is right next to the Starbucks, you have hose water <laughs> coffee. coffee. <laughs> Works for me, man. You know, that way it's just like home. Just like home. Yeah. So, uh, hey, on to, on to more important things. Yes. I was looking at this ball kit, I'm not going to tighten those shrouds. Oh, why is that? Because I decided that I'm going to fix it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like maybe if you tighten those shrouds, that chain plate might just come roaring might just right rip up right at right it. through the deck, yeah. You know, or, or it might just lift that entire bulkhead. Well, it, it actually has. It's funny you should mention wow. that. Wow, we're going to take photos of that. Yeah. All right. You know, I, I and, and I want to mention that uh, the whole point of restoring the young and the restless is so that we can take the boat to go see the waterfront jacuzzis who play on a regular basis on Lake Erie. No it's, kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very popular band. I hate, to, I hate to show my ignorance, but I'm not hip to them, man. <laughs> oh, wait till you see the waterfront jacuzzi. Pop up there. And then you'd be recording. Yeah, and then that button on top, you can flick it back and forth and it'll zoom or it'll widen. So we could get some some dy dramatic uh, yeah, right, shots right, here. Right, yes. Right. So I wanted to hear about the waterfront the jacuzzis. Waterfront because jacuzzis are, you know, I mean, uh, they're an enigma. Uh, they named an themselves enigma? after, of all things, a waterfront jacuzzi. It's 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 a mythical thing. Uh, we, I've never seen a waterfront jacuzzi, but apparently, the the band has seen a waterfront jacuzzi. They came together in that jacuzzi on a drunken night, and they play the islands of Lake Erie. So wow. we're, we're going to be in search of the waterfront jacuzzis. Wow, that you know that's something. Uh, were th uh, was that like a spinoff of the Clanking Halyards or the Clanking Halyards? Yeah, you know, actually, some of the members in the Waterfront Jacuzzis were, were in from the Clanking, Clanking Halyards. Halyards. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, I liked them. Yeah, I Did mean, you? yeah, I mean, well, the later at night and the more you drank, the better they sounded. But you know, and some of them have been known to hang around with Ray Fogg. Uh, huh? They've had associations with Pat Daly. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, you know, it, it's it's amazing how they've weaved themselves into the musical scene on the islands. You know, mm -hmm. uh, even there was some association with Bend Over and the Screamers used to play the Roundhouse, <laughs> the Roundhouse back in the eighties. No kidding. Back in the eighties, you know, back when Tom Petty was an alternative artist. <laughs> Remember that. So Wait. that's the whole. Point. Absolutely. So, uh, is it beyond glassing? Because we were talking about that, the rush to get it into the water. Yeah. Hey, Kev, I'll just take, what were you going to use? West systems or? Well, I was going to uh, put a kind of a backer plate on there yeah. and epoxy it in place. And uh -huh. I probably, I mean, if I still had some West systems left, I'd probably use that or Moss. Yeah. Uh, I like Moss. It's a little less expensive. Mm -hmm. Still a pretty good product. Try to stay away from polyester. Uh -huh. I don't know if I can for right. Because uh, I don't. Know, I, I just haven't had that much success with it on wood. It tends to delaminate. But uh, you know, in looking at this, and as much as it pains me to say it, yeah. it might actually be quicker and easier to fix it the right way. <laughs> 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 and, and you know that uh, <clears throat> you know I'm all into quick fixes and patches and, yeah. and let's go sailing, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it might actually be easier to fix it the right way. And, of course, that whole locker is a rectangle, and we were talking about how those screws are out of place, uh, you know, on the four side of it. Yeah. Uh, and that was an interesting... Uh, well, it looks like the, uh, it, it looks like the uh, upper shroud is, is pulling up on this side. Uh-huh. And since all those screws are loose in there, yeah, and and the wood has started to break down and rot, and this the actual on the other side of this you can't see it here is a is a stainless steel strap that goes up where the upper shroud attaches. Yeah. And uh, since this whole thing has started to move up, the other side of the of the locker has actually started to rotate down. Yeah. And uh, 
So what I'm thinking, and, and you know, I mean, good, bad, or indifferent, mm -hmm. Catalina did not use uh, any epoxy. They didn't tab these bulkheads in. Uh, so w what I'm thinking is that this cabinet pretty much comes out just by unscrewing it, taking it all apart. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm thinking I'll disconnect the upper shroud on the port side and uh, <clears throat> just bungee it off to one of the lower shrouds. Uh, the mast isn't going to go anywhere with, with four lower shrouds attached. And uh, then disassemble this whole cabinet in place. Yeah. Take it back to, to my basement <laughs> you uh -huh. know, where I have like every tool known to man. Yeah. And uh, and then just copy this, use this as a pattern. Yeah. And, and make a new bulkhead out of uh, um, some of that uh, three quarter inch or seven eighths uh, teak uh, uh, plywood that I've got. So that's, uh, and I'm hoping, I got a scrap piece that I think is, might just be big enough to make this piece out of so I won't have to go buy anything. Ah. Uh, you know, so although we're doing it the right way, yeah, I'm still using a scrap to do it. Okay, all right. <laughs>